Hey, how's it going? My name is Josh Calhoun, and recently I got a request to make a video on one of my favorite topics. And since for me personally, animal husbandry is one of my favorite things to talk about, I thought today was no better of a day to talk about my personal five tips on how to properly keep box turtles in an outdoor enclosure. So with that said, let's get into this one. So my first tip is going to be, since you're keeping them outdoors, you do have to worry about more predators than just Fido and Fluffy. So with that said, you need to keep your animals secure. That's going to be my first tip to you guys. And for most of you guys out there who are just getting into keeping your animals outside, literally putting a lid on them is going to be the best way you can do that. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just as long as the sunlight's able to get in, provide the natural UVB, because box drills naturally need that you should be good to go make sure you got a fairly small gauge wire especially in my neck of the woods because i have to deal with dogs cats um, possums raccoons one thing to scare me half to death are rats so i especially want to make sure this is nice and short and nice and small of a uh, gauge wire so let me open this thing up and i will open up on a couple other th other tips for you guys yes i'm gonna hit the pause button tip number two is providing as much space as you possibly can for your animals. Bear in mind, in nature, a box turtle's natural home range is going to be about the size of a football field. So these animals will use a huge amount of space. Despite the fact that this is a small species of turtle, most of your species no more than five inches or so, they ironically use a huge amount of, you know, land. So the more home to roam you can give them, the better. This particular enclosure is about 48 square feet, and it houses my three eastern box turtles within this enclosure quite well. Which tip am I at at this point? Oh yeah, tip number three, and that is providing various textures within your animal's enclosure. Keep in mind, these animals aren't just walking on, say, grass or just any kind of random, you know, dirt that you find at your local Walmart. When you go out into the woods, hence the species that I have is known as the woodland box turtle, so I especially take notes on this, they're not walking on just random stuff. They're walking on a huge variety of different things. So for me, some things that I like to have include, though certainly not limited to, dirt, carpeting plants, leaf litter. It's very important for a particular box turtle. Small twigs are another good idea. Tree bark. Fallen logs. And then one of my personal favorites, a good old fashioned rock. Now I like to have a rock in the enclosure, at least one for a couple reasons. For one, who doesn't like a good old fashioned stepping stone in the enclosure, you know? Second of all, this is also something that warms up and it's something where the turtles can actually climb up and bask on. Another good thing that I love about these is if you put their food out here on a particular stone, especially if it's a rough one, so if you throw out anything like, say, uh, any kind of berry, mine love different kinds of melon, um, leftover smoked chicken or pork or anything along those lines, as the animal feeds, their beaks are actually going to rub up against this stone, and that's going to actually cause natural wear on their mandibles and give them a nice healthy trim. Tip number four that I have is providing various hiding places in your animal's enclosure. When you're walking around the woods, there's all sorts of things that these animals can hide underneath, such as different kinds of fallen logs and kind of deadfall that way, branches, bushes, and shrubs. That sort of fun thing. And that's really important for these guys because if you just give them one simple place to hide, they're going to stick to that particular area and they're not going to want to explore the rest of their enclosure because of security purposes. Obviously, we don't want that to happen. We want our animals to explore and feel completely comfy in our enclosures. Another important thing about hiding places, especially if you have multiple animals in the same enclosure like I do, is these hiding places provide what's known as a visual barrier. So the animals actually don't see each other. That way, if in the event they just aren't in the mood of being around anybody, they can easily get away from each other and just have some alone time. Let's face it, whether we're an introvert or an extrovert, getting a little bit of time to ourselves is always nice. So, for example, this particular English violet right here 
is actually hiding one of my third turtles right here. This is Sunshine. And little did y'all know he was there, even though, you know, he's sitting right here. And Numbers pretty much had no idea he was right there either, despite the fact that she's not even a foot away. And tip number five is providing a very good size water bowl for your animals to actually take a dip into. This is not a species where you can just give there and give water like you would your dog or your cat. This is a species that really does well with a good body of water. Contrary to popular belief, they do swim halfway decent. And they do seem to enjoy a good water source. So you can use anything from, say, a terracotta saucer. Those are a fairly dirt cheap item. What I really like to use are these paint trays right here. And the paint trays, you know, they have a gorgeous little ramp right here. So the animals can get in and get out with hardly any trouble. They got a nice little deep end, so if they want to go in and fully submerge, they are absolutely capable of it. And getting out of it is absolutely no pr trouble in the slightest. So, once again, you don't want to, you don't have to give them, say, a giant swamp or anything like that, but a good water water source that's nice and clean seems to go a long way for these particular animals. The last thing I gotta say on this particular video is not really a tip, it's actually a personal responsibility on your part, and that is if you want to keep box turtles, make sure that you are allowed to do so legally in the location that you're in. Here in the state of Ohio, I have to have a very special permit in order to keep the box turtles that I have, you know, have at my personal place, along, oops, sorry, along with most of the native wildlife that occur here naturally. I do want to let you guys know it is 100% illegal to take a box turtle out in the wild and take it home to be a pet. That is absolutely not what you want to do. This is a protected species and just don't do it, okay? And there you have it, guys. Those are my personal five tips for y'all. As a recap, make sure your animals are secure. That way, they're not able to get out or anything like that. And you can also keep your animals safe from any kind of predators that you have that occur naturally in your area. The other thing that you want to think about is giving these animals a decent amount of space. These animals love to walk around, as you can see with crackers here. So the more home to roam you can give these guys, the better. These animals will thank you for that. The other, other step that I have, or the tip I have for you, sorry, is make sure you have in various substrates or various textures for these animals to interact with. Not only is that a good source of enrichment, but it also helps with good muscle tone. They're able to negotiate various things in their environment. So it can be, say, dirt, then, you know, old grass clippings here, a piece of good old bark. You can get creative with it. Next thing I want to say is make sure you have various places to hide. You can have, say, fallen logs in your enclosure, caves, bushy plants. My animals really seem to appreciate the bushy plants for whatever reason. But make sure they're able to get out of the sun, get out of the elements, or just get away from each other if they feel. Last but not least, also make sure that you are giving these animals a decent sized water source. As you see, Crackers is a little bit wet because she was actually in that paint tray I was just showing you all a minute ago. Ooh, sorry, I'm taking a losing my breath. And, um, yeah, they do absolutely enjoy that water. Also, guys, make sure you're doing this legally if you decide to keep a box turtle. If you have one and you don't have the permit about it, talk to your fish and wildlife. The ones around here in Ohio were very, very generous to me, and I was given a permit within a matter of weeks after, getting, after uh, talking to them about it. So, once again, I'm Josh Calhoun. This is Crackers, and, yeah, have a good one.